Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be doing a quick little lesson on one of the coolest integration tricks, King's property. Now this is one of the most straightforward and simple to understand integration tricks that you will see it all over the place in integration bees and other such problem sources. So it's definitely a tool you need to know how to use. And I also have some other variations on tricks that I use that are very similar to King's property. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the statement of King's property right here. It's super easy to prove. All you have to do is set u equal to a plus b minus x, and you'll see why this is true. It can also be interpreted if you sort of look at the graph of a function as instead of counting the area from the left going to the right, we're just counting the area going from the right to the left, which is of course just the same thing. Um, you know, the area doesn't become negative if you count in one direction or the other. There are three main situations in, in which we're going to see this method, and I'm going to go ov over integrals with each of these situations. Number one is going to be constructed problems. You'll see these often on integration bees, and something like this with square roots and natural logs, and it looks really nasty, but it, you'll start to notice the pattern where it's pretty clear that this problem has been constructed just to test your knowledge of King's property itself. The second one is going to be trigonometric integrals. Whenever you see integrals of almost purely trigonometric functions over, you know, 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, you're going to want to start thinking of King's property. And there's a separate version of King's property that is a little bit, it's actually technically a different method, but it can be converted into King's property. And this comes up when we're doing rational or logarithmic integrals like the one pictured right here. So we'll also go over those as well. So let's jump into some uh, general strategy here. So the first thing we're going to do whenever we're doing this type of problem is we're going to set the original definite integral that we're trying to solve equal to the variable i, or whatever variable name you prefer. Uh, of course, this is really just a constant, not a variable, but it's just the name we're using for our answer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to perform the substitution u equals a plus b minus x. There's also these two other substitutions that I'll go over later. Uh, but for now, we'll just focus on this first one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the original integral and the version in which we substituted a u equals a plus b minus x, and we're going to combine them together into one integral. So that means we're taking i plus i, right? And so the overall value will be 2i. And when we combine these two integrals, we're going to make some simplifications and cancel terms, and then the integral should hopefully be easier to solve. Then we'll have the value of 2i, and we can easily solve for the value of i. So let's go over how this works on a few different problems. So here's our first example. This is from the MIT Integration B in 2023 via regular season problems. So as you can see, we have the integral from 0 to pi of x sine to the fourth of x dx. This is equal to i. As I said before, we're just going to set it equal to a variable. Now notice that we're going from 0 to pi. We have a lot of trig here. Looks like King's property might be a good bet. The great thing about King's property is it's super easy and quick to try. So it's, um, you know, whenever you see a situation where it might be useful, I would suggest just go ahead and try it to see if it works. And if it doesn't, you probably didn't waste that much time anyway. So we're going to do u equals pi minus x. And this means that du equals negative dx. So we go ahead and change our bounds here. And we plug in pi minus u for x, since we can solve for x right here. And what, what's going to happen usually with King's property is notice that du equals negative dx, so we get a negative du here. And also our bounds here are going from pi to 0, which is not nice. So we're going to take this negative sign and we're going to use it to flip the bounds. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the identity that sine of theta min, pi minus theta equals sine of theta. So we can just go ahead and write this as pi minus u times sine to the fourth of u du. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rename u back to x. So we're just going to replace uh, u with x everywhere we see it, and you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to end up with the integral from 0 to pi of pi minus x times sine to the fourth of x dx, and this equals i. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add two different versions of i. So this version that we just calculated right here, and the original version from the original problem over here. We're going to add these two versions together, and so this means that 2i is going to be equal to this expression with both integrals here. And now, notice that something magical happens. In this one, we have pi minus x, and in this one, we just have plus x. So if we add these two together, the overall coefficient of sine to the fourth of x is just going to be pi. And then from here, it's just some basic trig identities and integration. And we realize that 2i is going to be 3 pi squared over 8, which means that our final answer for i is going to be 3 pi squared over 16. So let's go ahead and look at another example here. This is a very classic integral called Euler's log sine integral, and its value is super important to know. So let's go ahead on how to actually find this value. 
So again, we're going to do the same exact thing. Now we're going from 0 to pi over 2, and our integrand is natural log of sine of x dx, and this is equal to i. So the first thing we're going to do is set u equals pi over 2 minus x. And again, the bounds will flip, and we'll end up with a negative du, so we go ahead and use this negative sign to flip the bounds back to their original bounds. We're also going to see here that we have sine of pi over 2 minus u, and whenever we see that, we can go ahead and use our trig identities to just converse, convert that to cosine u. So we end up with the same integral as we started, except with cosine instead of sine. We set u equal to x, and then we go ahead and we take our two versions of i here, the one with cosine and the one with sine, and we add them together. So we end up with 2i equals this sum of integrals. And then using the properties of the natural logarithm, we can actually write this as sine x cosine of x on the inside of the natural logarithm. Then using our trig identities, we replace this with sine of 2x over 2. And then we separate the natural logarithms again. Now this integral on the right is super trivial to do, and this integral on the left, we're going to go ahead and use u equals 2x, which gives us one half the integral from 0 to pi of ln sine u du. And uh, of course this integral just evaluates to negative pi over 2 ln 2, and this integral right here, we split up into two separate integrals, the integral from 0 to pi of ln sine of x dx, and the integral from pi over 2 to pi of ln sine x dx. Now notice that this is just our original integral i, and since sine of x acts the same on pi over two, uh, going from pi to pi over 2 as it does going from 0 to pi over 2, since it's symmetric about that line uh, x equals pi over 2, this is actually also going to be equal to i. And so we get 1 half 2i minus pi over 2 ln 2. So overall, once we simplify everything, we get 2i equals i minus pi over 2 ln 2. And this means that it's super easy to solve for i. We just get that i equals minus pi over 2 natural log of 2. Now let's go over another class of problems that we can solve using King's property. This is with the logarithmic equivalent of King's property. So sometimes when we have logarithms and rational functions, King property will only make integrals more difficult because, I mean, if you imagine having natural log of like 3 minus x is a lot more annoying to deal with than just natural log of x. However, by instead substituting u equals a times b over x, remember originally we had u equals a plus b minus x, now we have a times b over x, we employ an alternate version of King's property. This is, uh, another way to do this is you can actually substitute u equals ln x, and then apply King's property the normal way, or maybe it's, yeah, yeah, it's the same idea. Um, so yeah, you can, it's it's actually equivalent to doing King's property, there's just an extra step in the middle, so sometimes it's faster to go straight to u equals a plus a times b over x. And when we see similar integrals and they go from 0 to infinity, instead we use u equals 1 over x, because obviously you can have 0 times infinity over x, so just use u equals 1 over x in that case. So let's look at a really cool example right here. This is a generalized integral here, our integral i equals the integral from 1 over c to c, of natural log of x over ax squared plus bx plus a dx. Now what we're going to go ahead and do here is we see a natural log, we see a rational function, and we see this is going from 1 over c to c, which means that this is right for our substitution. u equals c times 1 over c all over x, which is the same as just 1 over x in this situation. So this means that dx is going to be negative 1 over u squared du. And we go ahead and make this substitution, and everything turns a little bit nasty for a moment. But it's actually very easy to make some simplifications here. And we end up with the integral from 1 over c to c of minus ln u over a u squared plus b u plus a. Substituting u equals x, we get minus the integral from 1 over c to c of natural log of x over a x squared plus b x plus a. And notice that this minus sign is the only thing that's different from this original integral i, which means that this is equal to negative i, but it's also equal to our original integral i, which means that our integral i must just be 0. And if you're wondering where this negative sign came from, it actually came from when we substituted uh, u equals 1 over x. This became 1 over u, which became negative natural log of u. And that was the kicker here that made this turn into just a 0. So let's look at one more example. This is from one of my favorite math channels, Mathematics My. Please go check them out. Here, we're going from 0 to infinity, and we have natural log. We have rational functions. We actually have two natural logs here. So I'm just going to go ahead and try my favorite substitution, u equals 1 over x. So after we do this, we get this expression right here. Uh, I should note that this should be 
this here is multiplicative. It's not subtracting 1 over u squared. This is all multiplied right here. I'll go ahead and fix that right now. Just throw that in there. And so in this situation, there's a lot of simplifications that can be made. So if the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this u squared and we're going to put it in the denominator to turn this back into u squared plus 1. Next, we're going to take a negative sign after, out of this natural log of 1 plus u. And we're also going to factor out u squared right here and then separate that into a separate natural logarithm. Anyway, after we do all these different uh, manipulations, also taking this negative sign and flipping the bounds here, we can do u equals x, and we end up with minus integral from 0 to infinity of this expression right here. Now we go ahead and take our original integral i, and we add both versions together, so we get 2i equals the integral from 0 to infinity of all this stuff. And so anyway, our original integral looks like this, and our, our uh, new integral looks like this. And notice that this negative sign is actually in front of this term, so we can actually cancel uh, this nasty natural log 1 minus x plus x squared term. And then we can go ahead and subtract 2 ln x as well. And so this ends up canceling with the natural log of x in the bottom right here. And overall, we just end up integrating from 0 to infinity, 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is super easy. And our final integral answer to our integral i equals pi over 2. So I hope you guys like those explanations of those problems. This really is not a difficult topic, and it's super easy to get a hang of. Basically, all you have to do is make the substitution and then add the two versions together and simplify as much as you can. So I have seven practice problems right here for you guys to try of all three types of problems. Go ahead and give them a shot. And problem num number seven is right down here. If you struggled with any of these problems, uh, I am very happy to help you out with any of them. Just go ahead and join my Discord, which should be linked in the description, and I'm happy to give you a hand if you struggle with any of these problems. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for more of these tutorials that I will be coming out with in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.